Hey guys, hey there, I'm back. <laughs> Feels like, like uh, um, sometimes this, well this is in some ways become uh, an important part of my day uh, to do this. And, and to, I have a friend with me today and I was just sharing that, that we've been doing it since the 1st of May. And, and uh, um, so it, I, I'm grateful um, because it brings me into the moment. I get to be here and uh, with you. So thank you for that. And so today we're gonna do uh, a little chat. Uh, maybe uh, I, I wrote a few notes um, that are with this. And we thought we'd talk about love. And, uh, and then we'll do a reading from the 24 hour day book, which I have and, and, uh, and then a short meditation. So if you wanna join us for, for all three, that would be great. Hi, Patty. Um, so the question I asked was, you know, what is love? And, and, uh, you know, uh, I think that everybody has a, a different answer to that. And, uh, um, somehow, you know, we, we can get caught in, in kind of the ego's description of love and, and, uh, you know, what is, is love? Often we say that God is love. And, uh, um, and 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 uh, um, I find it distracting when you get distracted. I get distracted. <laughs> I, so um, the ego's description of love um, is something to get. I think you know, or something to give, even. And and uh, in 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 my experience. Um, I've often prayed to be more loving, <coughs> to, to be more uh, compassionate, to be more, um, you know, present. I think if I'm, to, for me to be here, to be present, requires love. And, and, uh, um, and so, so love, in, in my opinion, isn't, you know, something that we get. You know, it's not something out of a country song <laughs> of, uh, you know, somebody done somebody wrong song, you know, um, or love gone wrong song or, um, you know, uh, what did uh, Tina, is it Tina Turner that saying that love was the secondhand emotion? <laughs> and uh, what's love got to do with it, got to do with it? it you know, so I mean, it's... It, so much has been written about love, you know, so much discussion about love. And, uh, and we have, I think, especially from when we're living, in, you know, an ego-based, story-based life, uh, we're, we have fear around love, you know, because in some ways uh, pain is, uh, is uh, uh, associated with love. And, and uh, we, we've got, uh, uh, you know, some idea that that you know a judgment that that if we love somebody or we feel something for them an emotional love for them that and they don't it doesn't isn't reciprocated you know then there's pain and and uh, pain uh, is is all related to expectations you know so is love full of expectation I I don't think so I think that you know love is unconditional you know imagine loving somebody no matter what they did now many of us have experienced that with children and and uh, and yet we still as they get older we have to let them go we love them from a distance we can't mess around in their lives you know that's conditional you know and, and uh, so i mean sometimes if they're alcoholic and addict and we love them it doesn't mean that we're going to spend time with them because the way that their symptoms, they're, they're not them anymore. They're in the disease. And, and uh, so we can't be with them, right? It's like it's, we have to let them go and, and, uh, um, and learn how to love them from a distance, you know? So, I mean, there's lots of... Um, hello, Jennifer and Allison. So let's, let's, you know, look at love from a freedom standpoint. Hi, honey. Um, and, and recognize that if we love unconditionally, 
if we just love them, then it's not even in a way directed at somebody. It just is. You know, we are love. And uh, uh, we don't need anything uh, to show it even. We can, you know, it comes naturally. We are, we are that. And uh, I, I love uh, Dr. David Hawkins. Hawkins said as we, as we surrendered, as we let go of, um, you know, our ego-based life, which is, you know, fear and guilt and shame and, and, and anger and desire. As we, and, you know, as we let those things go, as we recognize them. And in the 12-step in the 12 world, we recognize them in, in step four. And, and uh, you are addicted to that thing. You are absolutely addicted to that thing. <laughs> Is that is that wild? Uh, you know, that's ego. It's like you know. It's just <laughs> so in our step four, uh, uh, we see the uh, how you know in 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 judgment we can be. You know, uh, and how in anger we can be, and how in fear we can be, and and it allows us to 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 see that, and we can surrender them, and we surrender them in six and seven. Where was I going with this? Hawkins said, as we surrender these things in six and seven, we move into our natural state. How about this? How about love being our natural state? What if love is our natural state and, and not fear? What if that's true? That love is our natural state, that we are love. And um, as, as we surrender fear, as we become aware of it, as we become conscious of it, as we see how it's run our lives, as we surrender fear, we move into our natural state. We don't have to work our way, and ego tells us we have to be certain of love before we can let go of fear. And, and that's, that's what keeps us in fear. So um, just, just recognize that we are that. And what's been your experience? You know, I mean, we've all had emotional love. You know, and love of things, and and love of possessions, or, you know. But there's a different kind of love, like a like a love for a pet. You know, which is unconditional. You know, for a dog, which seems unconditional, and for children, often it seems unconditional. And and but so we know it's there. We know we have it, and. Uh, um, yeah, that's, that's it, I guess. It's just, you know, we could go really deep into this idea, you know, um, and recognize that if we're angry about something that happened related to what we thought was love, that maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was a, it was an e a conditional ego agreement and, and, uh, and that we thought we were getting something. It was a contractual deal. We thought we were going to get something and it didn't happen. <laughs> so, let's look at the the reading for today. The um, uh, what day is it? The six, the six, yeah. And uh, you just close your eyes and and listen. Just imagine that that you can hear my voice and just listen. At the six. This is I read from this book every day. Now I have to tell you, and I always always agree with them. <laughs> You know, because sometimes I feel he's coming from the world of right and wrong and good and bad, the dualistic world of fear and judgment. And so sometimes I don't, I don't always agree with him. <clears throat> but we read him, and then sometimes there's just magic in what he says. You know, so it's, a, it's an amazing thing. I suppose that even the best of uh, this fellow who wrote this, and, and I found out recently, I thought it was 1954, but he actually wrote it, wrote it in 1948. It was in the early days of, of AA, and he speaks a lot of AA in this reading, in, in, uh, um, in, in all of his pages. And he's talking here, and he has been for the last couple of weeks, about having a slip. And um, we call them slips when we, when we have a, you know, when we lose our sobriety. And often we've lost our emotional, spiritual sobriety before we have lost our physical sobriety. You know, ah, you know maybe we never had it. You know, we didn't have spiritual sobriety. We were just hanging on or we were kind of going to meetings and feeding off of their spirituality. 
and, and uh, but the way to get spirituality, of course, to get this feeling of love, this oneness with God, is to to do the steps, you know. And and if we don't do the steps, people come to the twelve step world and to AA and to NA and CA, and they come around for six or eight months and they don't do the work, and then they say Jesus didn't work. <laughs> Well, it wasn't that it didn't work. You didn't work. It will always work if we do it. It will always work if we do it. I, I, I guarantee that. You know, it's an, it's an amazing process. It will always be lifted up to a new level. It says here, man has had a slip. He is ashamed of himself. So that's from ego. You know, it's ashamed. He's ashamed of himself. Hey, Kaylee, nice to see you. He is uh, sometimes so ashamed that he fears to go back to the 12-step meetings. To AA. He, develops, he develops the old inferiority complex and sells himself the idea that he is no good. He has let down his friends in AA. That he is hopeless. <laughs> that he is hopeless. That he can never make it. That state of mind is perhaps worse than it was originally. He's probably, he has probably been somewhat weakened by his slip, but his AA training cannot ever be entirely lost. He always knows that he can go back if he wants to. He knows there is still God's help for him if he will again ask for it. Do I believe that I can never entirely lose what I have learned in, in the 12-step world or in AA? Well, I, I just want to remark on that, that it, it, it he says, he uh, but he, uh, he, he, always knows, he always knows that he can go back if he wants to. And I debate that. I debate that because I've seen hundreds of people uh, go have a slip and never make it back. And I believe that most, if not all of them, wanted to come back but couldn't because pride, right? Pride wouldn't let them. It's a tough thing, you know, and, and, uh, and you know, fear wouldn't let them. And, and uh, they get caught in that trap of, of the depths of fear and, and shame and guilt and pride. And, and, and it's, they can't get out. So, so if you're sober, you know, and, and you read this and think, well, I can come back if I want to, uh, that, that your want to may not be big enough to get you back. And, that's, and, and so millions don't get back, literally. You know, AA, you know, hasn't got a... You know, it has a 100% success rate for those that do it. But not, uh, not so with, with, you know, if we don't. You know, we get exposed to it. We even learn the steps. People, you know, but, but lots of people end up, you know, it's a disease. It's a mental illness. We end up with a, with a gun in our mouth. And, and uh, um, I know that sounds a little graphic, but that's what happens, you know. Um, from a desperate place, the only way out seems sometimes to take ourselves out. And, and uh, that isn't getting back. Meditation for the day. Nobody entirely escapes temptation. We must accept it and be ready for it when it comes. None of us is entirely safe. We must keep our defenses up by daily thought and prayer. Doing the spiritual work. That is why we have these daily meditations. We must be able to recognize temptation when it comes. The first step, the first step, where are we? The first step towards uh, conquering temptation always is to see it in our mind. So awareness, consciousness, right? And that's my topic always is be conscious, be here. We can't see it, you know. We get lost in thought. And uh, so we have to be able to see uh, be able to see it in the uh, clearly. Uh, uh, the first step to conquering temptation always is to see it clearly as temptation and not to harbor it in our mind. Uh, dissolute, disassociate yourself from it, but or put it out of your mind as soon as it appears. Do not think of excuses for yielding to it. Turn it. Uh, turn it. One, at once, turn at once to the higher power for help. So prayer, you know, asking for help is the deal. Uh, and then the prayer for the day, I pray that I may be prepared for whatever temptation may come to me. I pray that I may see it clearly and avoid it with the help of God. 
So there's my little reading. Every day we've been doing that for the 24-hour day book. And, and uh, wow. And, and uh, yeah, freedom, baby. You know, it starts with awareness. And, and awareness, acceptance, change. It starts with awareness. We can't see fear for what it is. You know, we can't, it's harder to surrender it, you know, and, and uh, the depths of it. We can't see, you know, how we're caught in our guilt and shame. You know, we, it's harder to let it go. So let's, let's be always looking. And, and uh, self-awareness, know thyself, self-awareness. Uh, allows us to see and, and uh, um, you know that's why having a sponsor to help us really determine is uh, is crucial okay so we're going to do a little meditation if you'd like to join me uh, what I suggest is you sit up straight and uh, with maybe both feet on the ground and uh, so that uh, we, the, the temptation in meditation is to fall asleep have you ever fallen asleep in meditation? You have. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I have. As a matter of fact, I could tell you just a funny story. The other day I was really tired and we were doing this reading. I was in, uh, hmm, where was I? Uh, I think I might have been in, in Squamish visiting at my daughter's house. And, and we, so we did the meditation, we got started, and, uh, um, and I, you know, I do a little bit of a guided thing to get us into it, and and, uh, and, and we were there, and all of a sudden I was like, and I, I mean, I literally, I, I'm live, <laughs> and I, on on camera here in front of you, and I fell asleep, and at that time, my son Luke, who rarely comes to watch this thing, because I'm his dad, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And my, at that time, my son Luke uh, came on to you know to watch what I was doing, and uh, uh, and he was like, "Oh my God, there's Dad uh, doing his thing, this thing that I do, this thing," and he's asleep, and 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 he was like, "How do I wake? How do I wake him up?" <laughs> anyway, uh, I didn't go there for long. Uh, I can almost see your mind working. It's <laughs> anyway, so there we go. What's that? Uh, uh, Kayla says, once I woke up and was like, what the fuck happened? But it was beautiful. Yes, of course. It, you know, it, but also recognize that sometimes ego wants, puts us to sleep. You know, we're, we're, we're like, it doesn't want us to, to discover this space this new platform, I've been calling it lately like a new platform, like a new operating system called love, right? And do you like that? A new operating system called love instead of the old operating system which was called fear. And, and uh, so meditation helps us to drop into that space, you know, yeah, to become self-aware, to become um, free. You know, if we can see it, uh, it's easier to just let it go. So here we go. If we're comfortable, uh, we're going to uh, um, just sit for a few minutes, maybe somewhere between five and ten minutes we're going to sit. And, and I'll keep the clock. You know, you don't have to worry about the time. I've got it. You know, I'll bring you back. That's one thing that the mind sometimes is, oh, I don't have time for this. Well, just, let's just take a few minutes. What could be more important than freedom? What could be more important than freedom? When it, you know, like my friend Muji likes to say, and it's auspicious. Uh, you know what? You know what greater thing in, in to mankind and uh, to human the humankind than to to find freedom? Freedom from the mind, freedom from fear. Wow! So meditation is is part of of the possibility of that. So let's do it. Close your eyes. Just drop in. We use the breath. I use the breath. Oh, little yawn. Yeah. To breathe in through the nose. Yeah, right away. 
for me, I just feel the shoulders relax. They just drop down. The breath, if we focus on the breath, nothing else is there. We're here in the breath, so we're here. The breath is very close to the moment, if not exactly at the moment. So practice being here. Now the whole thing of being here is to feel ourselves in maybe in our body a little bit, just feel our feet on the floor, feel our legs, our bum on the chair. Just feel our belly as it rises and falls and drop deep in. With the breath, we're dropping deeper and deeper with the breath. Now, if there are any aches or pains in the body, just include them. Don't worry about them, just include them. They are what they are. Remember, you're not your body. You are not your body. The body is a vehicle. It's just a, a container, a beautiful container that allows us to experience this world. The body comes and the body goes, but we don't. We were here before the body, and we will be here after the body. Who is it that was here before the body? Who is it that will be here after the body? That's what we discover in this moment. We see the oneness, the beautiful oneness, the stillness. Just drop in. thoughts come up, just let them go. Remember, you are not your thoughts. They're kind of random. Thoughts are random. Just let go of them when they come. Their sounds in your space, just include them. Just expand and allow them to be part of each moment. It's just the hum of the refrigerator, the hum of the TV, or the hum of the computer. Just allow it. Remember, there's nowhere to go. Nothing to do, nowhere to be. Thoughts come up to just let them go. If they're really troublesome, breathe, bring yourself back to your breath. We start to see that we are not our thoughts. That we're always jumping on them and I call it getting on the thought train or the fear train. Just let the train go by.
It's okay to have thoughts. Just set the intention not to get on the thought train, just to let them go. our beliefs, let go of our conditioned ideas, our concepts about life, just for a minute, see if we can sit still and be here now. It's a good little time, maybe closer to 10 minutes. Thank you. Just come back now when you're ready. Just come back. Just feel how light, sometimes our, my body just gets so light, feels so good. Dropping into nothingness, into oneness, into isness to love, it's possible. It's also possible to take this with you each day, to be, remember this state, and to, as we practice this daily, we can be in this state, free from fear, free from anger, free from judgment, free from need, recognizing that nothing's missing. In each moment, nothing is missing. All is perfect. So thank you. If you're still with me, I'd love it if you go to YouTube and subscribe to our channel, Bally and Beyond, Project Awakening. If you could. And, uh, yeah, I love you lots. If you have any comments, thoughts, just leave them... Uh, here and I'll get, I'll, I'll answer them. We'll talk about it. Any questions? We'll talk about it. Thanks, you guys. Love you so much.